So again, hi, everyone. <laughs> and welcome, and thank you for coming here. Um, we're going to talk today about confidential clusters. My name is Marav Dean, and I am um, a senior manager at Red Hat. With me is Uri Lublin, a uh, top-notch engineer. And uh, yeah, we're going to show you some really cool stuff today. Um, the talk is about confidential clusters. Keep in mind that confidential clusters can be, um, can be deployed on public clouds as well as private clouds. But the talk today will focus mainly on public cloud. Um, also, in order to understand what confidential cluster is, uh, there are some basics that needs to be covered. Uh, I'll go over them as well. Uh, if you know some of them, then you're just going to enjoy me explaining them again. Okay, so um, what we will discuss today. First, we're going to start with the why. Why do we need confidential clusters? Um, and then we're going to talk about the basics of confidential computing. We're going to talk about what the public clouds are offering us uh, in this area, and we're going to end up with a great demo. Okay, so why do we need confidential clusters? So, um, as we know, um, more and more uh, enterprises and, and organizations are adopting the use of, uh, of public clouds. It has been escalated by according to Gartner, by 20% after COVID, and it's being uh, even higher with all the AI hype around it. So more and more people are moving their applications toward uh, the public cloud. Uh, and it's great, except for one tiny little problem. And the problem is that uh, we're essentially running our workloads in an environment where we have no control over the infrastructure, right? It is, by, it is being managed by a third party. And this kind of puts my, my sensitive data in a threat, because I don't know um, how well these uh, infrastructures are maintained in terms of uh, malware. I don't know if there's an angry administrator that may uh, try to harm or, or make some uh, impact, uh, wrathful impact on, on, my, uh, on my data. So ultimately, I'm, I want to I use the cloud, but with concern, with, with additional um, protection to my, to my data. So one might argue and say, okay, then you know you don't trust the cloud, third party and everything, go ahead and have your own cloud on, on the premise. So I can do that, but uh, of course it'll, it'll require extra cost and, and all the managing that comes with it. And I will, I will lose the benefit of, of running my, my workloads in the cloud, right? Because with that I can, I can shrink and expand my, uh, my, my resources based on the need, on the dynamic need. So I'm gonna stick to, uh, we're gonna stick to uh, uh, using the public cloud infrastructure, but we need to find a way to somewhat protect uh, our sensitive data. And this is where confidential computing is coming into place. It helps us to control who sees our data when it is run on this uh, public uh, infrastructure. Um, so, if we can summarize it, then we will like, we'll need to use, we will want to use confidential clusters because first it increases the overall security of my, of my, uh, of my cluster, of my, my workloads. Um, when, I, when I use confidential cluster, I can run my containers anywhere uh, and it's, it's safe. Uh, in terms of user, I don't really care what lies underneath, I just know that everything is extra protected. Um, it is going to help obviously, to uh, accelerate the move from on-premise to the cloud. And when I say that, I, I'm targeting specifically more um, um, organizations, government organizations and other that have uh, regulatory requirements, um, health, finance, government, and it, it's all pretty good, except for one, and there's a, one little drawback, it's a bit more expensive than deploying a, a regular cluster. Okay, so now I hope that I've convinced you that it's good and it's benefit. Let's see how it works. So um, it's as simple as instead of use the, it's quite simple. Actually, when we do confidential clusters, we're going to use confidential um, virtual machines underneath. They have ability to support confidential computing. Confidential computing is a hardware-based technology, and it comes with three key features. 
Um, the first one is isolation. Uh, we have a, a new area called TEE, Trusted Execution Environment, where the process is running there safely, uh, and it's protected uh, from the host and from other users. The, th the second thing that it, that it brings is encryption in runtime. So um, until now, our data was protected when it was in transit, right? When we transfer our data from one place to the other. And then um, we use TLS or HTTPLS uh, to protect the data. It's also saved when it's at rest. Um, and now we added the third angle of this protection. I have to smile now. And now we add the third angle to it, uh, which is to encrypt it at runtime. Um, the third thing, the third key feature, which is super nice and needed, is attestation, meaning I need to have the ability to know that the workloads that I'm running are running indeed on a safe environment. OK. So the attestation is like a whole new, it's a whole topic. Uh, but just to give you a glimpse, this is a very, very high level of the flow that, that, needs to, that uh, takes place when attestation is taking place. So uh, as I said before, this is a hardware-dependent technology. So the first step is to ask the CPU, tell me, like, give me an evidence that you are indeed supporting uh, confidential computing. Um, this evidence is then taken, sometimes along with the VTPM state, to attestation server. Uh, it checks it and it gives me back some sort of a, a reply that I can use and uh, safely now deploy my upload, my, my application. Okay, um, so in order to um, understand it a little bit better, uh, we're going to take a deep, like a quick dive into the cloud infrastructure. Like what does a node in infrastructure in the, in the cloud provider looks like? Um, so they use virtual machines, they use virtualization. So um, is anyone here uh, not familiar with virtualization? Okay. So uh, very uh, uh, sophisticated audience, that's great. So in, uh, in a regular virtual machine, we have the hardware which supports virtualization, and we have the hypervisor, and we have the guest on top um, when we, we run the application, and if we now, take a look at the confidential virtual machines. So what you see here in green is the um, protected area. So if we look at the uh, landscape of confidential computing in general, uh, so it takes, it gains more, a lot more attention, like it gets more and more attention. Uh, we see it from both from customers and from the cloud providers that invest more and more in supporting this infrastructure um, as it is hardware-dependent platform, we also see evidence in the um, number of, of CPU, major CPU vendors who support this technology. So we have AMD and Intel and IBM and ARM is uh, a bit far behind, but they're, they're catching up. Um, now we're going to take a look at the cloud offering that, that we have. So um, if we look at Google, so Google has uh, AMD SCVES. Um, this is the, uh, not the top, um, uh, and the most advanced uh, architecture, um, but this is what they have today available, and you can try it with the RHEL 9.3 if, if you'd like. Um, they also have public preview with a, mo with a um, more sophisticated uh, hardware, which is the AMD SEV SNP. It also encrypts the, the, the data page uh, and it prevents it uh, from being uh, tempered with reordering. Uh, they also have recently launched Intel TDX, uh, also in uh, public preview. Um, if you look at Azure, uh, to compare with, it's more uh, advanced in this area. So a, they have AMD SCV SNP, memory encryption, disk description, uh, and uh, the, the decryption is done in the TEE, um, in the guest itself. Um, the attestation here is based on, on Azure, uh, on their attestation service. Uh, I will say that uh, there is an effort to kind of separate it and be, like work more toward the zero trust um, attitude and working on, on the separating, like op having an all operator that will be able to use it to do the attestation, not by the cloud providers, by, but independently. Maybe the topic for the next lecture. Uh, and they also have Intel TDX, uh, recently public preview in 9.4. Uh, AWS, memory encryption only, 
again available in, in 9.3. Okay, so we've discussed about confidential cluster, confidential computing, and everything. So we're going to discuss the use case that we're going to uh, demonstrate today. So in order to deploy our cluster, we're going to use OpenShift. So OpenShift uh, is based on Kubernetes at its core. Um, Kubernetes is uh, open source, uh, aimed to uh, help us manage and uh, de de development and running of, of uh, containers, application, um, applications in, in containers. Um, open uh, Reddit OpenShift added, adds, in addition to that, some um, management tools, alarming, image registry, and, 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 uh, and, and so on. Um, in order to deploy Kubernetes, you need to have a controller, uh, control planes, and uh, compute nodes or worker or worker nodes. Uh, we're going to see that in a minute. And of course, in order to have it confidential, all virtual machines are confidential. So this is a slide I uh, stole from our uh, sales guys. Um, so can you see this? Oh, okay. So we have the the. Uh, infrastructure that you run on top, so it doesn't matter if it's edge or public or private, private cloud or virtual or physical. We have the Linux, we have the Kubernetes, we have the OpenShift, and on top you can run whatever um, application that you, you would like. So we're here, so that means that there is absolutely no impact on the upper layer. Um, and actually in the demo we're going to use OpenShift AI on top so that you can see that it doesn't affect whatsoever, it's just that you run the same thing on the cloud, but it's just more secured. Okay, so this is what our demo will, will actually uh, look like that we will show you in a minute. So we're going to uh, deploy um, OpenShift cluster on uh, Google, and it's gonna be using uh, SVS, because that's the GA that they have right now. Um, of course, all the green parts are the ones uh, that are safe. <coughs> and on top of that, we're going to use uh, OpenShift AI. <coughs> OpenShift AI, for those of you who are not familiar, this is uh, one of the latest um, infrastructure that Red Hat published. <coughs> Sorry. It enables you to, uh, um, to take your, uh, your um, AI model, train it, and have the whole infrastructure to support that. And with that, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. I have a question about the, the, how it trains with the AI, because maybe this is my limited understanding, but uh, the AI model is usually running GPU, and this trusted environment is running on CPU and memory, right? So how does it fit together? Right, so... Lukash. Lukash, thank you. So Lukash, uh, can I take postpone this to after the demo, and then we'll, we'll answer that? Oh, you don't need that. Okay, thank you, thank you, Merav. So, in the demo, um, we're, we're going to see how easy it is for the user to really install confidential cluster and uh, try it. Um, just uh, some some changes in the install uh, configuration. Uh, it is uh, we are going to use OpenShift install. It is assumed that a non-confidential cluster is uh, can can be installed on the so all the services that are required by uh, in Google at, um, are enabled. And uh, we're just going to add a few lines to the installation config and, um, and see that uh, it installs the, open sh uh, the confidential cluster. Um, the user is uh, the OpenShift admin, the administrator of OpenShift. And um, it's important that all the, all the nodes are confidential. That's that's uh, what the confidential cluster is, so but uh, it has to be also configured that way. And uh, yeah, it's uh, that easy for the user because a lot of work was done 
in the upstream communities and you know, by the hardware, by AMD, Google, and uh, our uh, kernel virtualization and OpenShift and the ecosystem engineers. And so, uh, okay, so let's see. So first, uh, we look at what needs to be added to the install config, um, to the install config file. So in this example, I use the platform GCP and the default machine platform, which means all act uh, take take this configuration for all the nodes in the cluster, and the. Uh, so we, we say we want the confidential compute to be enabled. The type of the CPU. So the CPU must be one that uh, is uh, supporting this uh, technology. It's only the newer uh, CPUs and the specific types according to the cloud configuration. And uh, that's probably also why it uh, costs more because uh, also only, only uh, works on new CPUs. So, in the, in this in this uh, example, I I picked the standard eight, and uh, on host mait maintenance needs to be terminated. So, no migration uh, because it ties to the currently ties to the CPU, and the secure secure boot also we set to enable. Um, an alternative approach can be to s specify these lines in a, uh, in a separate section, one for the compute uh, nodes and one for the control plane nodes. So in this uh, example, which I did not run because it's uh, commented out, but I just wanted to show, uh, we have a different uh, CPU type. So that's an example for when you want to do it, but, but really you have to set all of them to be confidential. So, so you see still everything is, uh, must be enabled, confidential compute and the uh, on maintenance and secure boot, but the type is different. And that's, that's basically it. So now we're going to install the cluster uh, like, like any other installation with IPI, with OpenShift install. Uh, and uh, I, I paused it there for, a, uh, for a while just to show uh, that there is an, ex another VM, an extra VM that is called the Bootstrap VM, which helps with the OpenShift installation. And I wanted to show that it's also running uh, <coughs> with a confidential, as a confidential VM. Uh, and uh, then we go back to installing the cluster. And uh, actually, it takes a while, but uh, I showed it, it for you. And installation complete. And now, like any other installation completes, we can uh, export the cube config to access with the uh, OC. And um, we can access with the web console. And uh, so we have to type cube admin and we'll take this uh, password to be used later. Uh, from Google point of view, we see there are six there are six VMs, three for the control planes and three for the compute. And uh, now let's see the details of these uh, the details of these VMs, and we see really that all of them have the enable confidential and the uh, enable secure boot on. Uh, and now let's see how it looks like from the gas pr perspective uh, by going and looking at the serial port of the VM, which is uh, basically like the journal or the message. And we're grabbing for save, just uh, 
seven, it did recognize, so the guest did recognize that the, it's running on AMD Sev, uh, so the technology is on. And yeah, as I mentioned, we can export cube config and then access the, uh, the cluster also with OC, and then basically you do everything the same. So the admin installs the cluster as a, in, as a confidential cluster, but later you just use the cluster. Uh, this, is, this is how it looks lo like from uh, the Google a web console, and uh, also here I dive in the one of the VMs just to show uh, how it looks from the web console. Um, so again, you see uh, that the confidential VM is enabled. The, the machine type is what we requested and to the standard eight and it's a CPU platform is AMD Milan, which actually fell in use. Uh, support even serve SNP in public preview. And the, the secure boot and VTPM and integrity monitor, they are called shielded v properties that they are all on. Um, one one thing is uh, that I did not sh that I did not show in this video is that uh, the attestation uh, quote or evidence that uh, Merav talked about that that is being showed it can be showed it's uh, in a, a log some uh, log so we, one can uh, look at the log as well in addition to this just uh, to verify. <coughs> And uh, you can also, of course, get it during runtime uh, on the VM. Um, and that's it. And now we can use the OpenShift web console. We just paste the, the um, password that we took before, copied before, and uh, then we we access so again we from open shifted point of view everything is the same um, if if we go to to the machines for example we can see that open shift open shift agrees it remembers that it's confidential uh, i mean the properties are there and um, and and it's uh, fairly simple to install so usually uh, we show like the simplest workload uh, in a container, but here uh, since OpenShift AI is released and everyone is talking about it, I, I want to show you that it's, we can install it and just run the simplest like uh, Jupyter notebook. So you just uh, look in the, in the operator hub for OpenShift AI. We already installed it, but if we click here, it's being installed, and then we create the cluster, just uh, two clicks, and it uh, shows the, all the, it shows that all the containers in this uh, project, Reddit ODS applications, are running and then we can go to the OpenShift AI web and then, and there is the Jupyter, it's already enabled, we can do whatever we want. So like you see, the, basically we have, um, basically you, again, you just work with the cluster as it, uh, as it is and uh, and, but it's more secure, and it's very simple for the admin to install it that way. So I will let it run. It's just the simplest uh, Jupyter uh, notebook, and uh, we can go for the questions. Yeah, Lukas asked here. Uh, sorry, 
Yeah, right, about the GPUs. So yeah, we don't have GPUs here, uh, but uh, there, there is a work to uh, there, there, there is work going on to enable GPUs. Basically, uh, the network disk when you want to write it, you just encrypt it before, right? And then there is something called the uh, bounce buffers because you want the data to be encrypted, but the metadata kind of of the packets, for example, to be not encrypted. So uh, it can be used. And with the GPU, uh, you want um, you want to, to agree some some kind of agreement uh, with the CP with the GPU uh, about uh, how how it's going to access your data. So the NVIDIA, for example. Uh, basic example. So NVIDIA, uh, they they have uh, they are working on it too, and uh, they have their own kind of uh, their own way to uh, split kind of the GPU to to use to be used by different by different VMs and uh, take care of all the confidential stuff. And then you need to somehow cooperate between them, just. When, when the driver uh, loads or, or something like that. And also you need the attestation that uh, Merav was talking about. So you need to request also uh, the attestation from the GPU. And then you pick it from the GPU, you pick it from the CPU, and you send it over to the attestation server. And this... That's work in progress, yes. I think the question I repeat the question. Ah, so the first question, sorry. The first one was about how to use GPU in a confidential uh, co environment, like uh, in our confidential cluster or confidential VMs. And, uh, and this question was uh, what the status of this work. So yes, it's work in progress. Um, but that's true for, uh, for the confidential VMs, confidential clusters. Yeah, go ahead. So, okay, I'm not sure exactly what they are doing uh, with the encryption there, but I think it just uh, what we want from the CPU point of view is uh, to limit the access of the GPU to the right uh, memory, kind of. I mean. I mean, inside the GPU, you cannot you cannot access you cannot access really the GPU memory, but but you don't want the GPU to be able or any device, basically to to be able, maybe to access uh, freely your memory. So you have to, you know, part of part of this handshake that is going on is uh, set to it what what parts of the memory it uh, gets and maybe. How to do, how to get the memory and this can also be a topic for decrypted. The design, like the GPU. <laughs> well, yeah. I, could, I could imagine to, to handle it similarly as maybe some, some quick caches with the with the CPU, which are probably as well not encrypted in, in the CPU yeah. case. But you have to build something around it so that nobody from outside can access the memory somehow. Or, yeah, I, yes. So the comment is that. Uh, yeah, the comment is that uh, we have to design it well so it stays confidential, basically. Uh, maybe one last question. Yeah. Okay, so the question is what the impact on performance? And there is a impact on performance. Uh, but like anything with performance, it also depends on your workload. Um, and uh, I don't have numbers, I'm sorry, and uh, I don't have numbers. And also, I'm not sure that uh, hardware vendors, I mean, 
we expect other hardware vendors to publish those numbers, but um, like any CPU basically. But but I don't know if they do. Uh, but it depends on the workload. You know, if uh, if if uh, you just use whatever is in the memory, you don't need to decrypt it when it goes uh, for memory. Oh, okay. Uh, um, maybe I just don't understand this trusted computing uh, structure, but uh, in my imagination, if I only have the private key or the key to the encryption of my workload data and software, and I will publish it to the uh, cloud uh, service, then I, as I understand it, I have to uh, reveal all my secrets to the public cloud Right, so the, sec so the question is, uh, if I'm running something on the cloud, and uh, we talked about how the secret gets to the VM to the guests af upon attestation, so the question is, but then I really have to put my secret on the, on the, in the cloud. So first of all, uh, that's, one, that's one way to do it, uh, or oh, that's the maybe kindly their way to do it. Um, so, but it, if you, prov if you uh, trust the, it's a different service, it's a different service, right? The attestation service or the key, the key management service even. The, so if you trust this provider of key management service, it doesn't really have to be one from the cloud, it can be anyone. And, and also you can, uh, supposedly, you can run the attestation on your machine. And then if you enable all the VMs, theoretically, if you enable all the VMs to access machine that you control, and you run the key management and maybe the attestation service there, then you don't need to provide this uh, key. You can keep the key but making, make sure that uh, only, but, but then you, you really have to, you know, open all the ports uh, in your environment that enables all the VMs that you're running on the cloud to access it. So theoretically that's possible. Yeah. So it's not really zero trust. That's, yeah, that's the point. When you run on the cloud, it's not zero trust at all. For example, you do trust uh, the firmware, so. Uh, yeah, there, there are talks about bring your own firmware, but we'll yeah. not get to it. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's our talk. Thank you very much for.